of a Christian lodge. Only because it is a sacred book of the Christian religion. The Hebrew Pentateuch in the Hebrew lodge in a Korean in a Mohammedan room on the altar, end quote. So the Bible is a part of furniture only placed upon the altar in a country where the Christian religion is predominantly practiced. In a community where the Jewish religion prevails, you'll find the Pentateuch. And in a nation where they follow the prophet Muhammad, you will find the Quran on the altar. Unlike Christianity, Freemasonry does not offer humanity one saving universal creed. Instead, says 32nd degree Freemason Dr. J.D. Buck in his book entitled Mystic Masonry, printed in 1925, Masonry is a, quote, universal science, end quote, and, quote, a worldwide religion and owes allegiance to no one creed and can adopt no such sectarian dogmas as such without ceasing thereby to be Masonic. Masonry is the universal religion only because and only so long as it is all religions, end quote. According to 33rd degree Mason Delmar Dwayne Dara in his book, entitled History and Evolution of Freemasonry, printed in 1954. Masonry publicly tailors itself to the prevailing faith or moral system of the nation within which it operates. Like any good con man, he adapts his personality to the situation and to the people around him. The original plan of Freemasonry, he states, Quote, was intended to give to the world a thoroughly tolerant institution and the recognized book to be used was to be that volume which was accepted as the basis of the religious belief of the country or nation wherein masonry might propagate, end quote. Admitting the delusion, the deception. While Dara states that masonry, quote, tells no man how he should worship God, but leaves the method to his own selection, end quote, he also insists that masonry transcends the particular faith of its members. And I quote again, those early founders of masonry conceived a system of moral religion at whose shrine all men might worship, the Christian, the Catholic, the Protestant, the Confucian, the Buddhist, the Mohammedan, as well as all others who are willing to acknowledge a supreme being, thus there has evolved a religious society which has been charitable enough to recognize good, whether it be found in the Bible or the Quran or in the moral code of those who have sought the higher things of life, end quote. Now, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, I am not judging these things. I am merely revealing them to you. Remember the admonishment, judge not, lest ye shall be judged. I hate deception. And I expose deceptions, I expose lies, I expose manipulations, and I expose those who perpetrate these things. And that is the purpose of this broadcast. Now, at this point... I think it's appropriate that we should ask ourselves what God accepts the worship of adherents of all religions. Certainly not the God of the Bible, and if you know anything about the Islamic faith, you know it's certainly not the God of the Quran. And if you have ever visited a Jewish synagogue, you know very well that their God is a jealous God. A demanding God. And it is certainly not the God of the Jews. So what God is this? And when Christians in Freemasonry are confronted with the syncretic universal claims of Masonry, such as those I have just presented, some justify their affiliation by saying their membership gives them the opportunity to witness for Jesus Christ in the Lodge. I have myself witnessed them propounding this excuse on many, many occasions. 
And it is one of the greatest lies that they ever tell. For it is not true at all. You see, the doctrine of Freemasonry strictly forbids Christian witness within the lodge. In fact, in every lodge that I have investigated, it is forbidden to even name Jesus Christ. It is forbidden to refer to him. And when a pastor that I know, a new initiate in the lodge, was asked to give a prayer and ended the prayer with, quote, in Jesus' name we pray, end quote, he was drawn aside by the master and admonished never to do it again. So this claim that they joined the lodge to witness for Jesus Christ is a lie. Dr. Mackey, one of the most famous Freemasonic historians, a prolific writer, in his lexicon of Freemasonry, makes this prohibition explicit. Quote, the religion then of Masonry is pure theism, on which its different members engraft their peculiar opinions, but they are not permitted to introduce them into the lodge or to connect their truth or falsehood with the truth of masonry. A Christian mason is not permitted to introduce his own peculiar opinions with regards to Christ's mediatorial office into the lodge, end quote. I have admonished you on many occasions. If you want to learn about your enemies, or your friends for that matter, don't read what someone else writes about them. Read what they write about themselves. For that is the only way that you will ever find the truth. And even then, you must sometimes wade through layers of deception and symbology. In fact, in regards to the Masonic Lodge, a Christian upon pain of death is not even permitted to pray in the name of Jesus Christ inside the Masonic Temple. According to Edmund Roynain, a master mason who authored the Masonic Handbook and who later renounced masonry, he said, quote, Whenever a minister prays the name of Christ in any of our assemblies, you must always hold yourself in readiness if called upon to cut his throat from ear to ear, pull out his tongue by the roots, and bury his body at the bottom of some lake or pond, end quote. Since this truth has been exposed, the Masonic Handbook has been revised, deleting this and other incriminating evidence. Because of this, as I and others reveal the secrets behind the lodge door, you must go to the oldest writings of Freemasonry in order to find what they are now deleting from their writings. Reverend Jim Shaw, a 33rd degree member who renounced Freemasonry after becoming a Christian, tells of a pastor initiated into the first degree of Masonry who was asked to pray at a Masonic gathering. This pastor, in ignorance, closed his prayer in the name of Jesus, and Shaw reports that the pastor was later taken aside and gently reprimanded with these words, quote, We don't want to offend our brothers who are of other faiths by ending our prayers in Jesus' name. From now on, in your prayers, in thy name, amen, are used an abrupt amen, end quote. You see, Masonic authorities insist that the name Jesus Christ is not to be uttered in the Masonic temple. If the Christian mason does make a slip of the tongue, his anti-Christian programming will begin. Now, you know me, folks, I care not upon which altar any American worships. For I am a true constitutionalist, and I believe that we must all have the freedom of religion of our choice so that I may have mine. It's a logical conclusion from all of this that if the founder of Christianity cannot be mentioned in the Masonic Lodge, Freemasonry cannot be a Christian institution. Their claims to the contrary notwithstanding. Indeed, Dr. Mackey confirms this in his Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Quote, Freemasonry is not Christianity, end quote. 
He states, and I quote again, its religion is that general one of nature and primitive revelation handed down to us from some ancient and patriarchal priesthood in which all men may agree and in which no men can differ, end quote. And I beg to differ with him. But if Freemasonry does not worship Christ as the Son of God and the Savior, what God, if any, does it worship? And what kind of religion is it? For they have stated in their own words, they have made it clear that it is a religion and it is a church. And there is a deity. Again, the Masons provide the answer very clearly. They refer to God as the great architect of the universe. A God who is a personification of humanity. Now, if you know anything about building, you know an architect creates nothing. He takes what has already been created and he builds from it. So their God is not the God of the Bible, the God of the Mohammedans, the God of the Jews, the God who created the universe, the heavens and the earth. But instead is a God who is a personification of humanity. Dr. J.D. Buck in Mystic Masonry states that, quote, the only personal God Freemasonry accepts is humanity in total. God, the great architect of the universe, personifies himself through man. Humanity, therefore, is the only personal God there is, end quote. Now, understanding that, you may begin to understand what has been happening to the United States of America. Freemason and past grandmaster Daniel Sickles elaborates in his book entitled Iman Rizan, and I quote from his book, If we, the suitable true devotion, maintain our Masonic profession, our faith will become a beam of light and bring us to those blessed mansions where we shall be eternally happy with God, the great architect of the universe, end quote. Likewise, says Dr. Mackey in his lexicon of Freemasonry, quote, a nation who lives in strict obedience to the obligations and precepts of the fraternity is free from sin, end quote. Now, to a Christian, the Masonic equation of God with humanity recalls the lie of the serpent in the Garden of Eden when the serpent told Adam and Eve, quote, ye shall be as gods, end quote, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. As we know, humanity again attempted to become like God at Babylon after the great flood, which mystery Babylon was born. Freemasonry and the other secret societies, the fraternities, the brotherhood, whatever you wish to call them, the order, the Illuminati, are merely the modern equivalent of mystery Babylon. Freemasonry has adopted the belief of mystery Babylon that God and man are the same. And if, as they believe, the Master Mason is the temple, then man has proclaimed himself God in the temple already. I reveal to you during my series on Mystery Babylon, ladies and gentlemen, that the number of the man, 666, is the number of the illumined man, the man who has been through the three degrees and six acts, the man who will rule in the New World Order, the priesthood, the adepts of Mystery Babylon. Whether you believe it or not, makes no difference. If they believe it and they have the power, it will affect you, and so you had better understand it. Freemasonry, folks, is also a religion of works, for it teaches that man can obtain his salvation outside the mediatorial work of Jesus Christ. This is plainly contrary to the teaching expressed by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. And I quote, For by the grace 
You are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, end quote. Symbolic representation of the religion of works of the Masons is found in the most prominent emblem of universal Freemasonry, the square and the compass. And these two are so widely... ...stands before an audience and refers to the time when he raised his arm to the square. When he makes that statement, he is identifying himself to the other Freemasons who may be in the room or in the audience or in the hall as himself. A Freemason. Another method is to stand with the heels together at a 90 degree angle, straight and tall, in a room. Any other Freemason in that room who sees the feet arranged in the corner of a square immediately recognize that person as a brother of the order. The square and compass represent the tools used to create the heavens and the earth by the Masonic great architect of the universe. In America, the letter G in the center of the square and compass is said to represent God. That's what they tell us, anyway. The emblem of English Freemasonry, however, more powerfully illustrates the Masonic God and religion of work. In the center of their square and compass is a human arm holding a hammer in its hand Curved in the shape of a sickle. And you may notice that that is the same emblem of the old Soviet Union. The curvature of the arm and the position of the hammer shaped the letter G to represent God. The next time you see a flag of the Soviet Union, you will see that the hammer and the sickle were arranged as to shape the letter G. This emblem of English Freemasonry displays the Mason's God as man at work building his temple in heaven. French Freemasonry displays the same symbology as American and English Freemasonry. In 1877, declaring that, quote, there is no God but humanity, end quote. French Freemasons incorporated the hammer and sickle as their symbol. However, the French Masons reversed their design so that it is shaped like the left hand backwards, which in Masonic symbology means the negation of God or the declaration of atheism. In the esoteric meaning, the letter G stands for Gnostic. Gnostic. For the truth of their religion, ladies and gentlemen, is this metaphor. Man was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden, in the bonds, the chains of the hearts, by an unjust and vindictive God, a terrible God. Man was freed from the bonds of ignorance by Satan, acting as the agent of Lucifer, when he endowed upon man the gift of intellect. With the use of this intellect, Man himself will become God. It is the old promise in the Garden of Eden that God said, Ye shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, lest ye shall surely die. Satan said, God lied. He doesn't want you to know that you yourself can be as God, and he holds this from you if you eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Ye shall know the difference between good and evil, and ye shall become as gods, and ye shall not surely die. That is what is at the heart and soul of this. What deity accepts the worship of good works? From the Egyptian, Hindu, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, Confucian, Mohammedan, Mormon, Buddhist, Christian scientists, spiritist or adherent to any other religion? Certainly not the God of the Holy Bible or the Quran or the Torah. For obviously, Freemason is a religion, but not one compatible with Christianity. Christians are obliged to have no part of it. The followers of the nation of Islam are obliged to have no part of it. 
proper Jew is obliged to have no part of it. Yet, deceived uh -huh. of all faiths remain in the lodge for two reasons. One, either they are not diligent students of whatever holy word they follow, Either they are not diligent students of whatever holy word they follow, which forbids fellowship in false religions, or two, they have not been exposed to the truth of masonry as revealed in Masonic books. Ladies and gentlemen, the hour of the time is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. If it were not for the sponsorship of this broadcast, you would not be hearing this. Expose tonight, and the ones that have gone before, and the ones that will surely follow. You all need their services. You all know what they do, so I've encountered it over and over and over again, so I'm not going to do that again tonight. I'm just going to ask you to call them at 1 800 289 2646. Explain to them what your needs are. Ask them how they can help you. If you already have something in mind, tell them what you want. 1-800-289-2646. Do it. Do it tonight. You know how you are, and of course I know how you are, because I know how I am sometimes. We tend to procrastinate, and thus many things never get done. So 1-800-289-2646. Give your family the security that they need. 1-800-289-2646. And do it right now. I wonder just how many of you really understand the true meaning of those words. The Freemasons trace their spiritual ancestry all the way back to Nimrod, whom Genesis identifies as the founder of the kingdom of Babylon. Genesis chapter 10, verse 10. The Masons see in the destruction of the Tower of Babel the destruction of ancient Freemasonry. The scattering of the college. So, too, in their writings and rituals, they see Solomon's temple as symbolic of their rebirth and progress. Likewise, their rites and symbols contain many, many pagan elements reminiscent of Babylonian mystery religion. Dr. Matthew, in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, quotes the York Manuscript Number 1 which contains old charges of Freemasonry on parchment dated in the year 1560, written in doggerel, the York Manuscript locates Masonry's origins at Babylon. Quote, At the making of the tour of Babel, there was Masonry first much esteemed of, and the king of Babylon yet was called Nimrod, was a Mason himself, and loved well Masons, end quote. Matthew also cites the Cook Manuscript, which is sometimes called, quote, the legend of the craft, end quote. It is the second oldest Masonic manuscript, dated at the time of its discovery, 1450, but is believed to have been penned in 1420. Also written in doggerel, it repeats the claim of the York Manuscript, and I quote, and this same Nimbroth, began the Tower of Babylon, and he taught to his workmen the craft of masonry, and he had with him many masons, more than 40,000, and he loved and cherished them well, in quote. Mackey explains the significance and use of these texts in Freemasonry. Quote, the old instructions speak of the lofty Tower of Babel as the place where language was confounded and Freemasonry lost. So when the neophyte being asked, Whence he comes and whither he is traveling, replies, from the lofty tower of Babel, where language was confounded and masonry lost, to the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, where Solomon's temple was later built, where language was restored and Freemasonry found, end quote. Of course, it can be found in shorter versions. When I was in Salt Lake City speaking at Preparedness Expo, Lindsey Williams approached me shook my hand, said he had heard my talk, and asked me if I was a traveling man. 
I said, what do you mean? He says, do you travel? I said, uh, can you elaborate a little bit? He says, have you ever been to the East? I said, I understand what you're talking about, and I am not a member of your brotherhood. He gave me one each of his books. I gave him my book. He told me if I ever needed any help to let him know. And I told him I surely would. He not realizing that he had already helped me extensively. And now by reviewing this to you and helping you. That King Solomon's temple is of extraordinary importance to Masons is confirmed by numerous Masonic texts. The Masonic Library asserts, quote, Solomon's temple is one of the most sublime symbols in the order of Freemasonry, end quote, and Mackey concurs, stating, quote, tradition informs us that Masonic lodges were originally dedicated to King Solomon because he was our first most excellent Grand Master, end quote. While Masons borrow the image of Solomon's temple from the Jews and put it to their own use, as we shall shortly see, they also cite another source of Jewish inspiration which actually derives from Babylon, which the Jews brought out of their captivity, the Kabbalah. According to the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the Masonic Lodge drew much of its initial inspiration from the Kabbalah, the rabbinical book of concealed mystery, which Mackey acknowledges, is a development of Persian Zoroastrianism. The Kabbalah is an apostate occult form of Judaism. It is not Judaism. It is not Orthodox Judaism. But an ancient esoteric tradition which the Jewish rabbis acquired while in captivity at Babylon. Mackey remarks on its use, quote, much use is made of it in the advanced degrees and entire rites have been constructed on its principles since it demands a place in any general work on Freemasonry, end quote. In fact, folks, the Scottish rite of Freemasonry is called the Jewish rite not because it was founded by the Jews but because the Masons derived its doctrine from the Kabbalah. Moreover, the ritual in the Blue Lodge for the first three degrees of masonry centers around the allegory of building Solomon's temple. Masonry, you see, imbibed dualistic Eastern mysticism through the Kabbalah. But while the Jews may have looked forward to the literal rebuilding of Solomon's temple as a restoration of their religion, Freemasonry imported from Rosicrucianism and the Knights Templar allegorical speculations on Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple was used symbolically in the Sonic initiation ritual to signify the spiritual rebuilding or restoration on high of the Tower of Babel. And Mackey explains, quote, If the Tower of Babel represents the profane world of ignorance and darkness, and the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, as the symbol of Freemasonry because the Solomonic Temple, of which it was the site, is the prototype of the spiritual temple which Freemasons are erecting, then we can readily understand how Freemasonry and the true use of language is lost in one and recovered in the other. And how the progress of the candidate in his initiation may properly be compared to the progress of truth from the confusion and ignorance of the Babel builders to the perfection and illumination of the temple builders, which temple builders all Freemasons are, end quote. Matthew further states that each lodge is and must be a symbol of the Jewish temple, each master in the chair representing the Jewish king and every Freemason a personation of the Jewish workmen. The Masons, however, are far from equating Solomon and his temple with any historical biblical reality. In fact, that king's temple signifies to Masons the sun god. The sun god is revealed in Wagner's An Interpretation of Freemasonry where he explains how the Masonic meaning of the name Solomon differs from any biblical understanding. 
quote. This name, Solomon, is not the Israelitish king. It is the name in form, but different in its name. It is a substitute which is externally or exoterically like the royal name. This name is a composite. Ha-om-om. Uh, um, um. The name of the sun in Latin, Indian, and Egyptian. And is designed to show the unity of several God ideas in the ancient religions as well as with those of the It is a glyph which indicates the unity of the God ideas of these various cults a coordination of their deities and expresses the Masonic idea of the unity of God as it was conceived of in these religions. Wagner's miracle plan in German is supported by Masonic literature. Dr. Mackey in Manual of the Lodge confirms the Masonic preoccupation with an orientation to the sun. Quote, the orientation of the lodges or their position east and west is derived from the universal custom of antiquity. The primitive reason for this custom undoubtedly is to be found in the early prevalence of sun worship. Freemasonry, retaining in its symbolism the typical reference of the lodge to the world and constantly to the sun, in his apparent diurnal revolution, imperatively requires when it can be done that the lodge should be situated due east and west so that every ceremony shall remind the Mason of the progress of that luminary, in quote. The sun in Freemasonry is the symbol of Lucifer, their true God. As lights developed in the Masonic religion of work, Masons were taught that as they advanced through the various degrees, they were symbolically climbing Jacob's ladder to the celestial lodge on high, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil of secrecy to bring about the new world. Again, Matthew's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry explains the connection between the Masonic corruption of a biblical image and the ancient mystery religion. Quote, As to the modern Masonic symbolism of the latter, it is a symbol of progress, such as it was in all the old initiations. Its three principal realms, representing faith, hope, and charity, present us with the means of advancing from earth to heaven, from death to life, from the mortal to immortality. Hence, its final place on the ground floor of the lodge, which is took of the world, and its top rests on the covering of the lodge, which is symbolic of heaven. It is the prophet of Lucifer. The similarities between Freemasonry and ancient mystery religions are, of course, many, as you are beginning to see. One example can be seen in the pattern of initiation in the Lodge, which retraces the pattern of initiation into a mystery religion, as Freemasons are well aware, for indeed it is a mystery religion, the Babylonian mystery religion, and they conducted their initiations underground, at night, in the dark, and usually in what was known as a tomb or a crypt. Freemasons, Pearson and Mackey, and traditions of Freemasonry and symbolism of Freemasonry respectively reveal how Freemasonry draws upon and reenacts the ancient customs. Quote, In every country under heaven, the initiation, in effect, into the mysteries were performed in caverns, either natural or artificial. Darkness, like death, is the symbol of initiation. It was for this reason that all the ancient initiations were performed at night. The celebration of the mysteries was always not common. The same custom prevails in Freemasonry, and the explanation is the same. End quote. Likewise, the structure and customs of the lodge imitate the ancient mystery religions, as Freemason Daniel Sickles in General Ahmad Rizan reports. Both the lodge communities at the present day are actually held in upper chambers because before the erection of temples, the celestial bodies were worshipped on hills and the terrestrial ones in valleys. End quote. It is an established fact of ancient pagan religion that where mountains were plentiful, pagans worshipped the sun on mountain peaks. Where there were not mountains, they built pyramids. In Mesopotamia, these pyramids were called ziggurats, 
As archaeologists and biblical scholars confirm, the ziggurat was called by the pagans Mountain Peak, Hill of Heaven, Mountain of God, or High Place. The differences between the God of the Israelites and the God of the Masons are obvious and instructive. First, although the Israelites sometimes fell into idolatry, the God of the Israelites was never identified or confused with created nature, in effect, the Son. Second, Almighty God never spoke from secret. God speaking to the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19, says this, and listen carefully, quote, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. End quote. Tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, is taken from several books and several references. One of the newest, however, which you should obtain if you can, and we are going to try to procure this book because one of the books that I've seen, besides my own research, entitled Scarlet and the Beast, a history of the war between English and French Freemasonry. It was written by John Daniel. And the three volumes, this is volume one, has 882 pages. And if you're successful at obtaining these books for resale, we will make them available to you on the hour of the time. And we will, as always, continue your education into those who are destroying this nation and the other nations of the world to create their earthly utopian return to the golden age, as they call it. The age of the dominant of Babylon, a return of the old gods and the old pagan religions to be ruled by the man whose number is 666, the illumined man. He who has undergone the three degrees and six acts who believes that he above all others possesses the only truly mature mind is capable of ruling the cattle, shepherding the flock, the sheep. You, my listener, good night. And God bless each and every one of you. And God save this republic. Yes, and we're off to Haiti. And now for you people that...